but like, so I don't really like sitting behind here, but I guess that's what we're gonna do, right? Um, I have lots of games and activities if we get to some of those. But um, I wore this special necklace today. I know you all think it's lovely. Um, but we are each part of this chain. And when we link together, we are stronger and we're more unified and we, um, it's just so much better if we're linked together instead of trying to be alone. One link just isn't so strong. And so um, when there's a break in the chain, it affects, it affects and, and makes it so that it's just not as strong. So don't be the weak, weak link okay you don't want to be a weak link because um, it affects everybody and everything around you and and it makes the, the chain compromised so when we unify in purpose and and we're all stronger I just I just love this conference theme so much there's just so much to connections I love being linked to you as Relief Society sisters and um, I love Relief Society, I always have. I've always loved visiting teaching. But if you think about all the ways we're connected, it's pretty special. And Sister Jardine talked on some of those this morning. And I, I love those. Um, the greatest blessing of this life and eternally are our connections. And the plan of salvation is all about staying connected to heaven. So today I pray that um, You'll feel the excitement of being a strong link and a real connector, especially to your families, because that's what we've been asked to talk mostly about. So I'm glad they gave you some papers so you can jot down your inspirations. It may not be anything I say. It might just be, oh, I have some inspiration. It's just like the story that Sister Jardine shared about everyone being linked. Um, Jessica Mae Simmons in that story it was on the beach and she thought she gave herself a positive affirmation I can hold my breath while I swim around a whole uh, Olympic side swimming pool and so that's what we do we use our talents and and we can uh, help others well here's a picture oh that was Lugano Switzerland don't you love that chain I thought oh, I better put that in here because it's all about being linked Okay, here's a picture of my siblings. I love these people. So there were three girls, and then one boy and three more girls in my family, and my brother was right in the middle. And we're all close, and we feel great connections, and we're, we keep in contact often. And then the next picture is a picture of my dad. It's not the best picture, but my dad and his siblings. And I show this because it was really this, this group that had such um, inspiration in uh, keeping families connected and the importance of that. And so reunions and gatherings and spending time together and enjoy each other and celebrate was always a real priority to my aunts and my dad and my uncle. Um, the next picture is my great aunt Hazel. Great aunt Hazel lived in, um, Soda Springs, Idaho. And that's where we had our first reunions because all of my dad and his siblings loved Great Aunt Hazel. She was the only girl in a family of boys. And their mother died early and she pretty much raised her brothers. And so they just loved Great Aunt Hazel. And because they did and we were so connected, we loved her too. And I loved uh, all the things that she taught me. Well, first of all, she lived on the corner right across from the high school. And so we could have um, all this space to watch the parade in Soda Springs and down the street, we could go to the cart catch. And we did this with our cousins and we really connected. We were, we were close. Great Aunt Hazel made cookies for the soldiers during the war. And one of her cookies that she made were raisin filled cookies. And I'm a master at these cookies. Every reunion, that's my job. I get to make the raisin dough cookies. Um, she used to mail my dad a can of raisin filled cookies in a shortening can. And um, 
and because he just loved him. And so on the day of her funeral, when my dad got in the car, he found a can of raisin filled cookies on his seat. I wonder how they got there. Anyway, um, so, you know, I'm so grateful for these connections. Um, then our family started getting old, you know, bigger. And so we moved our reunion to Pocatello where they were, all my aunts and uncles were from except one. And we started having our celebration in Pocatello. And we would meet at my Aunt Lorraine's house. Yeah, Great Aunt Hazel again. Oh, and the recipe in her handwriting, just so you know. Okay, so um, we would meet at my Aunt Lorraine's house. We'd have a flag ceremony and a little short devotional about how much we love our country. And then we would have a fun run. And we would all um, do this. It was about a 5K, probably. Uh, which took us past our grandma's house. You, you couldn't cheat because you had to go by her house and pick up a flag in the yard. And the, st the score car was fun. Um, it had things on there like, um, I brushed my teeth this morning, plus 50, I didn't brush my teeth this morning, or I kissed Bart, or I didn't kiss Bart, or my socks match or don't match. I mean, it was just a lot of fun. It had nothing to do with how fast you were. And the only problem we had with that was when my uncle put it in the Runner's World magazine and we had other people show up and they were like, what's with this scorecard? <laughs> <But anyway. laughs> then we would go back to my aunt's house and we'd have a great big breakfast and play games and have fun and, and have a parade. And everybody really got decked out in their 4th of July wear. Um, so we'd have a parade and the kids would decorate their bikes and Bart would take his mom's 72 Chevy Nova and oh 62 sorry um and um we put the old grandmas in it on the back you know put the put the what's it called the top, the top? yeah the top and 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 we'd have this parade so that was always really fun and then we would go up to aunt marilyn's house aunt marilyn lived up on the farm and she had a swimming pool and she had lots of grassy area for games and water uh, fights and a uh, fun swing set and we would play and have a barbecue basic barbecue hot dogs hamburgers Aunt Marilyn's great potato salad and and baked beans and just just great memories of being together my parents kind of lived up from ISU so the fireworks were off of Red Hill so we ended up my parents house to watch fireworks do fireworks and um, have root beer floats and, and popcorn and those kind of things. So as our families kept getting bigger, we broke off again because now everybody was getting married. And so it, it went to just uh, my siblings and just our basic families doing our own reunions. So most of my siblings like to do their own families on the 4th of July now. So we have family reunions at another time. And um, it's often associated with something else like a birthday or, or not. We're just finding a venue, you know, but it's important. And right now we've decided only to have them at the, every third year and we're trying to pass it on to the next generation because, you know, we're getting old and tired. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm gonna show you some pictures of some of our Hawks Nest reunions. Um, First of all, we've got this video of Teddy. Now watch carefully. Great nephew. <laughs> Four years old. Yeah, we dodged one. I'm just gonna say, we've been very blessed not to have any disasters because we've had lots of fun. And um, um, Bart, you can probably just keep um, going through some of those. We always have a t-shirt. I brought a few of the t-shirts. Um, and I don't know, when you do a hat or a t-shirt or something like that, it's just kind of fun and unifying. I'm sure you all do the same things, but that's this t-shirt right here. And on the back, I think is the next one, maybe. Love when an otter. Now, why otter? Well, because my dad, too bad some of the school teachers aren't here, but he has always had this thing for otters. He likes to watch sea otters. He thinks they're so fun that they have more fun. And so because otters have more fun, 
that's he has an otter costume and he has a song well you ought to do this and you ought to do that and you ought to have a lot of fun i mean this goes on and he um so a lot of our our themes have something to do with the otter you know return with otter those kind of things. so um you ought to be otter be you know you've heard that song <laughs> we change words to songs and anyway um so that's that's why he's crazy our family likes to have fun and and it only speaks probably to us but it's weird and crazy and fun um so um our last reunion that we had is this last well wait there's one more in here i think it's my mom eating cherry cream pie and so food's big. You gotta have good food. There she is. That's when she was kinda not well. My dad's feeding her cherry cream pie because she always made cherry cream pie. It's a family favorite. So you know how you get your favorites and and you know that Six Sisters cookbook? Oh, that's not us, but you know. It could be because they're six sisters, but no. We have our own cookbook. <laughs> okay, um, this book right here, Dinky the Giant, we put that together for my dad's 90th birthday. That was the last time we met, last August, when my dad turned 90. And we spent three days together. And here's his t-shirt for that. Um, he has a, we have a saxophone on that. Living miracle to living legend. My dad always played the saxophone. He used to play in big dance bands and he used to toot his horn on our rear ends to wake us up in the morning <laughs> and all sorts of things. So. We have the horn, he played at all the kids' weddings and everything else, but this book is really fun. You might get a minute to look at it. Everyone got to do a page. We just charged a dollar a page to kind of defer the cost, but um, we had a great time. We spent three days together. Why Dinky the Giant? Because he was less than three pounds when he was born, and um, he had to stay in the hospital all those years ago for 19 days at $1.50 a day, if you can imagine, down at LDS Hospital, my grandma, she would walk um, three times a day, 10 blocks, to go take care of him and feed him. And, um, and so he really is kind of a little, a little miracle. So um, all of our names are on the back of the t-shirt. I think that picture's coming up. It's in the form of a 90. Um, and there were like 150, I can't remember, 156 or seven that, of his posterity that were able to attend. And we, the last day he paid for everyone to go to Lagoon because that's what he liked to do when we were little. He would, he would grab one of us and just go have a day with us and take us to Lagoon and spend some time. So gathering has always been a, a big part of, of our lives and um, Important in the hawk's nest, our maiden name was Hawks, so we were always called the hawk's nest. There were always extra people at our table for Sunday dinner, and um, we always had my grandma Green and my uncle Myrel um, to eat with us. He was, and oh yeah, you can keep me, showing the rest of those. Yeah, just go keep showing those. I'm just really so thankful for the connection that I had with my, my grandma Green. Um, she was amazing. It was my mother's mother, and she lost her husband when my mom, my grandpa, she lost my grandpa when my mom was just 10 years old. And so I never met my grandpa Green in person. Um, and then six months later, um, she lost her six-year-old son getting his tonsils out because he, he got too much ether. And then right after that, my Uncle Wayne, who was 16 years old, married his sweetheart Millie, who was 15 years old. 15 years old. Now, they were kind of young, and that was a little bit like, oh, what's going on in my life? And then she went to work at the railroad. All in the same year, all these things happened. So I just have always had lots of, um, just love talking to my grandma. She's had lots of experiences in her life, and I... I love to go have sleepovers. I saw that over on the board, have sleepovers. 
Um, I loved combing her long hair that was she'd roll up on the top of her head and put under her wig and her ugly wig. It was kind of ugly. <laughs> but she had this long hair. So in her mid-80s, I took her to get her hair cut and permed. And it was so much cuter. And um, I think there was a picture of, of her with her hair like that. Yeah. There she is. See, it's cuter. Um, she's on the on your right, and she's next to my great aunt Hazel. And he, Aunt Hazel was on my dad's side, but but Grandma Green was my mother's mother. So here they are together. Anyway, I love these two ladies. I just think it's really a priority for our kids to be close to their grandparents. I really do. It's special. Um, okay, one other thing. I think that kept us so united is that we ate dinner together every night. It was something our parents rarely excused us from. And we have many memories um, around our dinner table. One of them, and this is something, um, everything I needed to know I learned growing up in the hog's nest. Um, kind of like that kindergarten book, but there's a lot of good stuff on there. And as I found that and pulled that out, a lot of what I'm sharing today is on there. So you might just want to snap a picture of it. It's kind of fun. But anyway, my mother got this great idea to make us liver sandwiches one Halloween. And we had to eat them before we went trick-or-treating. Well, of course, none of us liked them. And so my dad started dropping them to the dog. And it says on there, if you don't like your dinner, feed the dog. And it also says, um, hide your food in the middle of the table because when my mom wasn't looking we pulled the table apart that where the leaves were and dropped our sandwiches in there and and slowly and quickly we were all able to get out the door to go trick-or-treating so that was a good memory around our table another thing is is i don't know how this happened but we started being we started this Halloween card that we did not mail out to everyone. Now, I want you to know this picture was taken. Look at this great spooky tree. It's on the grounds of the Salt Lake Temple. <laughs> but then we added to it. But anyway, when we're together, we can do our picture for our, for our Halloween card. And it just goes to our aunts and uncles and our and our kids and some nieces and nephews. We don't do a whole lot, but it just became kind of <laughs> Now guess where that picture is? Can anybody tell? It's the Payson Temple. So we all just stood there like this, and then we were able to add in broomsticks and stuff. So anyway, kind of naughty, but kind of fun. Um, so I just think, I know eating dinner is kind of tricky, especially now but let's let's hear from a modern day apostle elder oaks he said the time a family spends together eating meals at home is the strongest predictor of children's academic achievement and psychological adjustment family meal times have also been shown to be strong a strong bulwark against children smoking doing or using drugs there is inspired wisdom in this advice to parents what your children really want for dinner is you. He goes on, today children are far busier and families spend far less time together. Extracurricular activities need to be carefully regulated. Parents become frazzled and frustrated when children are overscheduled. Uh, preserve time for FHE. Come follow me. I added, come follow me. Um, family prayer, family scripture study, and other precious togetherness and home one-on-one -on -one time that binds a family together and fixes children's values on things of eternal worth. So in our family, um, we would always have family prayer and whoever was there at our house had to join us. Um, so we had to kneel high. You couldn't sit on your knees. My dad made us kneel up high. That was how we were taught. I taught the missionaries that. And um, he would pull us close in tight into this tight circle. And oftentimes my brother, my one and only, one and only brother, he would reach around and pinch our bums during the prayer. And we tried so hard 
to keep our composure and be reverent because we didn't want to be reprimanded. But oftentimes we ended up in a lap vest and I can tell you, um, or Bart could tell you that he's also had his bum pinched in our family circle. Um, President Irene, he said, even when family members are not living in a home, prayer can build bonds of love. Prayer in the family can reach across the world. More than once, I have learned that a family member far away was praying at the same moment for the same thing that I was. This is President Irene. For me, the old saying, the family that prays together stays together, could be expanded to the family that prays together is together. Even when they are far apart, they stay connected. So guess what? Because we knew that and we love President Irene so much, during COVID on the mission, when that broke out, we instigated a prayer time. And for us, it was 10 p.m. And in America, for our families in America, it was 2 p.m. And so we asked our, or invited our mission families to join us in prayer at that very same time to set your alarm and whatever you were doing to stop and kneel because tensions were really high during COVID, including and maybe more especially for our missionaries' parents at home. I think our missionaries did really well. So we did that to connect with our families, and um, and it was really a unifying experience and a simple simple way to strengthen and connect. So thank you, President Irene. We love you. Um, okay, my mother. Here's a picture of my cute mom. My mom was a great homemaker. She was a great seamstress. She was a great cook. She was a great organizer of our busy home um, with lots going. Well, she instilled in all of us girls the, the love for stitching and sewing. And oftentimes, I have gathered with my sisters at, um, well, at each other's homes, but also like at women's conference, we'll go and have a stitching project. We did, um, we did this one during um, women's conference one time. In, in this one up here, we have several. We would just gather and then we would sit and stitch at night and we'd talk about what we learned and, and talk all night and then go to class and try to stay awake and all those great things. But I, I just feel so grateful for those talents um, and opportunities. I feel so grateful to be strongly connected with great sisters. We really do love each other and we have something special between us. We have rallied uh, recently around our sister Jeanette, who has been um, battling cancer, and we've been able to take turns going to the Huntsman with her, and uh, going to her appointments, and, and doing freezer meals, helping with, her, with cleaning or whatever. She chose a pattern that she'd like to sew up, and we thought it was a great idea that she could have something she would like to do um, on the days that she felt well. And so my sister Barbie and I, we went and got the fabrics and got things cut out and then got it all ready for her so she could sit down and sew a bird on the day she felt good. It's this cute bird quilt. Well, you sew the bird one way and then you have to sew it the opposite way. So in essence, you have to flip the bird. And I'm going to tell you, I flipped the bird a lot, in a lot of ways, as I sewed this, because it was the first thing I sewed in many years. I hadn't sewn for well over three years, and so it's, it's now a really cute, happy bird quilt. We all have one, and um, we, we're enjoying it, so with special meaning to us. Um, in this Gospel of Jesus Christ, we all understand the importance of family. Um, but every family is different. I always thought I'd have a large family. I came from a large family. We adopted our first two children and then we had a homegrown child. But we worked really hard to get our family. And some families, you know, are large, some families are small, some live close together, some live far away. It takes constant effort to build these connections. They don't just happen. You have to be on your A game and you have to make things happen. You have to use your talents and your inspiration. I loved what um, Elder Ballard 
uh, said in conference. He said, a few of his feelings of what matters most. That's how he started his talk. <clears throat> he said, relationships. First, a relationship with our Heavenly Father and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the most important. This relationship matters the most and in eternity. Second, family relationships are among those things that matter most. I recognize some of you may not have the blessing of a close family, so I include extended family, friends, and even Lord families as family. These relationships are essential for emotional and physical health. These relationships can offer joy, love, happiness, and a sense of belonging. Nurturing these important relationships is a choice. A choice to be part of a family requires commitment and love and patience. Communication and forgiveness. There are many, or oh, he says there may be times when we disagree with another person, but we can do so without being disagreeable. In courtship and marriage, we don't fall in love or fall out of love as though we are objects being moved on a chessboard. We choose to love and sustain one another. We do the same in other family relationships and with friends who are like family to us. I'm still quoting Elder Ballard. It was good talk. He said, the divine plan of happiness endures, sorry, I should wear my glasses. The divine plan of happiness enables us as families to stay connected eternally. He spoke of that, you'll remember this story, the strong impression that he had to visit his sister in his ward. And he didn't follow it. He responded that it was too late that night. It was too late at night. And then he tossed and he turned all night long because he didn't follow the prompting that he had. And the sister passed away that night. He said, a widow that died alone without the priesthood or a blessing. He held the mantle of bishop and realized he needed to think about what a bishop should do when he is inspired and prompted, which is such good advice for all of us, right? To just act. He said, stop reasoning. Follow your promptings and follow the Spirit. Because sisters, the Holy Ghost is our ultimate connector. So don't hesitate. Be bold. Just do it when you know you should do it. And even if you don't know, know you should do it, when those promptings come, have the courage to just act. Just do it. All of us and our family members, everybody is going to have rainy days. And some, and all of us, and at different times, even rainy seasons, right? We're going to have hard times. We all have diversity in our lives because that's the plan. That's how we grow. We have to have diversity to be able to grow. And there are many opportunities for us to follow the Spirit and so that we can be there for others. And when we listen and we follow that Spirit, then we hear it more and we have more and more opportunities and we learn how we hear the Spirit, and it comes more frequently, um, the opportunities do. Um, so, as we love and strengthen our family members one by one, each one, through their concerns, their trials, their needs, we build strong family ties, and we can help one another through our trials, like we did our sister recently. It does take kindness and trust from both sides, because there's agency and we can't make decisions for other people, right? And so sometimes it's kind of hard. It really is. But we all know that we can act the way that we know we need to. And we can still follow the promptings that we get, whether they're received the way that we wish them to be or not. We'll, we'll just go ahead and do what we know we should. So always remember and love our word families, our church family, our, um, you know, stake family, our family family. There's lots of different kinds of family. Um, but all these connections are interrelated. They really are. And it's all part of the plan to help us achieve greater happiness and a richer understanding of God's plans. Because these connections go 
way beyond just our own families. Um, others can become like family as you spend time and grow together. We all need people. So here's a picture of my sweet friend Irene Barton. And she's your sweet friend too, a lot of you, because she was this one wonderful, classy lady. She was with a group called the Wild Bunch. And I am an official honorary member of the Wild Bunch because I was so close to Irene. I have a little book here that um, her daughter and granddaughter made me, but um, oh man, to connect with people of all ages is one of the greatest blessings in life. Um, I love, I love these older people. And we, Sister um, Catherine Allen, when she was my partner, she, on that picture of with their canes, she made them all stationary that said, still raising cane. <laughs> so they would have some, some cards to send to people because they were so good at sending letters and such. Um, I love sewing with my sewing friends. And um, I love biking with my biking friends. And I love cooking with my cooking friends. And I mean, you just need to figure out things to do with people. And I recently heard of a game group that's been started. I don't know if they meet every week or every month or what, but how fun to get together and enjoy people playing games. Um, so just know that whatever you wish to do, you can do. You can start out and make those things happen. We had a lot of special connections on our mission. Um, my, this is on the day of our farewell since we were going to Italy we all had chow chow shirts on, but my family was great. They started a family WhatsApp group that really kept us connected from afar and um, it's still going on and, and we love that. Um, my family supported us greatly. Our last New Year's uh, fireside, my siblings all shared with the mission and it was one of the, a real special fireside that we had. I think between us seven siblings We've experienced just about everything. And so they were all able to share learnings from experiences that they've had in their lives. And the missionaries loved it so much. We learned a lot on the mission about the importance of connecting because COVID broke out in Milan first, before anywhere else in Europe, before the United States. And after we received permission to stay and not evacuate, we had to be really proactive and stay very creative and and, and do some uh, really hands-on things. And we realized that communication was really key. And so we met with the missionaries often on Zoom with other trainings, but with the whole mission every night, we had a Zoom meeting. And then every morning, their parents, wherever they were in America or wherever, would wake up to a, an email from us every single day. My tensions were high for several months because we learned that communication was really key. So right before we went into the mission field, that's when they started missionaries to call home every week. And people were like, every week, what are you talking about? It was so inspired because we didn't know what was gonna happen in the world. And during COVID, the brethren gave us permission to let the missionaries call home twice a week if we wanted to let them do that. Now we were meeting with a lot of other mission leaders and they're like, this is, this is just too much. And Bart and I got really excited about it because he had some great inspiration. He said, you know what? Let's let our missionaries call home on Wednesday like they usually do. And I always tried to get them to do an email first. Then let's have them write on Saturday some of their inspiration from the Come Follow Me lesson. And then on Sunday, let's have them join their family for their family um, come follow me lesson or their family worship service. And this was really exciting. And I want you to really enjoy this sweet video that we have from the mission. Hi, I'm Lynette Hastings from Rexburg, Idaho. I currently have a son serving in Milan, Italy. His name is Carson Hastings. About three weeks into the quarantine, President Brian Armstrong, President, gave us the permission to create a Come Follow Me talk to send home to our families and call home and participate in the whole family center in church. 
we check our emails every day just to see what's the news. Is he coming home? Is he not? Is he staying? What's happening? After we got an email from our son stating that his mission president would like him to be part of our sacrament meetings. We were so excited and we hurried and sketched in guest speaker, Elder Carson Hastings. And uh, he was able to call us that morning and we were able to watch him and he gave us a, a wonderful message from Come Follow Me. We talked often about who we want to be in this book and that's how we prepare and we talked about The minute we started that meeting, the spirit entered into our home so strongly. It was as if we were sitting in the temple. These 15 sacrament meetings and out of all the sacrament meetings in our whole life, these were the most spiritual and the most powerful I've ever had. And it really connected me with, with my family, with my grandparents, with my parents, with my brothers and sisters. We have roots. We've been able to have a lot of our family members talk. The grandparents have been some of those speakers as they shared some of their faith promoting experiences, some of their mission experiences, and even conversion stories. It's neat to be able to see our children get to know their grandparents on a, on a higher level through these spiritual experiences and that we become closer as a family. We say this a lot and we teach that the gospel bless us families and I was able to see this firsthand. This is the first time we've ever had the opportunity to be taught by our son. It's been wonderful to have Carson be a part of this experience with our family. And it's fun for us to be a part of his experience as well. We've got Carson with us again today, which is neat. As a missionary, one of our goals is to help others come up to Christ and help grow their faith in Christ. And I know that's especially true even for the ones we love most. Hello, Carson. We really feel like this home center church has strengthened our family spiritually and has drawn us closer together. So I don't know how many times I've seen that. Sorry. But you can feel the spirit over technology. And I think that was one of the greatest blessings of COVID is to help us learn how to use technology better. Um, his dad said it felt like the temple. What are, oh, the temple's the best. Make sure you hear Sister Harris, because I think the temple just saves me every week, just being able to connect spiritually with the Holy Ghost. Um, so technology, you know, made our mission, and it makes, makes for great connections. Now, it was so great that missionaries could connect even after they went home, we had missionaries who were able to speak at baptisms or give prayers. It's a, just a great thing. And I wanted you to see that because I want you to know that if you have family far away or whoever you need to connect to, you can feel the spirit over technology. And so there's all these ways that you already shared on the board. You know, FaceTime, Marco Polo, texting, phone calls, uh, writing letters, all these great things. Um, send an email. Um, it's just, I just think we really learned through COVID, especially why that was so important. I have a sweet letter from Sister Hinckley that she wrote to her granddaughter. Um, I don't think I'm going to take time to read that. Um, I just think something little often is what's important. And that's how we minister too, sisters. It's not once a month, it's something little, often. Even if it is just a text some days. We need, we need to connect more, we truly do. And it's not just with our family family, it's with our ward family and state family and dear friends. So I want you to have just a minute to look at these things. I love the youth thing. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. We can do this. We can do this because we understand this gospel and the love our Savior has for us. I love this gospel. I love my Savior, Jesus Christ. I love our connections with the Savior. I love Relief Society. And these, what a great day to gather and to, to connect with one another. 
I love the connection that Joseph Smith made um, when he asked God in faith and received direction from James 1, 5 and 6 that led him to the sacred grove. That connection that he felt that he could not deny. He knew what he knew. He saw what he saw. And he became such an instrument in the hands of God and in restoring this church of Jesus Christ. And because of that great connection, we're here, right now, here today. That's why. It's all about people. It's all about connections. It's about connecting one by one with love. I pray that we'll, we'll have the ability to connect more, to um, open our hearts, to make special connections, and to follow the spirit of what we need to be doing. Um, thank you for coming to the, the Great Family Connections class. <laughs> I want to connect more with you. There's several of you I don't know and several of you that are so dear to my heart. And I know that that connections are eternal and so important. And I say these things humbly in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You're welcome to take pictures of the board. If there's anything you need to remember or um, any of this, you can look through some of these books that I brought if you want or whatever. But thank you for being here today. and. Have a great rest of your day.